Well, hi guys, it's Sandy. Welcome to my YouTube channel where today I'm going to be doing monochromatic coloring, which is one of the easiest ways to get some decent blending. But first, let me introduce you to Sunny Studio, brand new stamp company. Mindy, the owner, is one of my followers and asked if I would be part of her blog hop. And I said, of course, when I saw these cute images. So she's got a Thanksgiving set with little critters in it and a little cute penguin that you can dress up in all different kinds of ways. And I love the sentiments that she's got because I love a script mixed with a regular font. I just think that's a really fresh kind of a look and I, I just love the fonts she's picked. So for monochromatic coloring, I pick all colors from one color family. And you may not have all those colors, but if pick the one that you have the most of. And here I have all the B9s and I'm gonna combine it with a zero marker. The zero marker will be a friend to you in most any of the color families that you choose. But you can do this in blues the way I'm doing, or you could do it in any color because you're going to see I'm coloring a penguin, but it's okay to color him blue. He doesn't need to be black. So if you have just a few colors in one of the color groups that you can use to create something that's monochromatic coloring, you don't have to have a gajillion markers. So this is an easy way to go. And with natural blending groups, they tend to blend the easiest as well. Natural blending groups have the first letter the same, and then they have the first number the same. And then the last number goes from lightest to darkest, from the lowest number to the highest. I'm doing my background first on this because I wanted to gauge how dark I wanted to make the rest of him against the background, because I wanted the background to still show up, and if I add too much color, in the image itself, then the background will kind of get all disappeared and weird. So I'm just adding a couple of these two colors, the, the lightest two, to make sort of these swooshes. And it's a great way to practice your flicking. And flicking is where you start off with the pen on the paper. And as you get to the end of the stroke, you just lift up off the paper. And that's what gives you that fine feathered edge. I'm using my zero marker to make the snow. And for this, you want a zero marker that's juicy. So you want lots of fresh colorless blender in it because it's gonna make these little puddles around the dots. And the dots, the, the way that the color blender works, it makes the dot, but it pushes the color away from itself. So it gets like a little halo around it, which actually tends to look really cute when you have it on some light colors like this, because it ends up just looking like little snowballs coming from the sky. Now the part that I knew I wanted to color first was the body that's supposed to be black because I wanted it to be in my, my B99, which is the darkest of the colors that I have in this natural blending group. And then I wanted to go to something a little less. I almost wanted to color the entire hat this way, but I decided to make it a two-tone hat. So I'm coloring a little hi uh, highlight color on the top and the shadow color on the bottom instead of coloring the whole thing with one color. And then I just started looking at the image to see what else I needed to have pop. And you can tell here I've already got some real difference in color between the hat and the background and the body of the penguin. So you're getting a real roundness of color even though I'm still only using one color family to create this. Because a lot of times we end up thinking that we need a lot of colors when you just need a lot of contrast. So my lightest color has a one as the last number. My darkest has a nine. So I'm using the full spectrum across that entire color family to create this. And I am going to cover up his little feet and that whole area at the bottom. So don't worry that it's not uh, finished off down there because that's what I'm going to do with it. I had my design in my head before I got started. So I'm using my zero colorless blender to add some texture onto the little knit hat and little knit mittens. And then I put him in his card and he's just standing in a little snowbank with a couple of, of dies to create the snowbank and a circle to pop him into. And I think it just came out really cute for super simple coloring. Just one color family can really have an impact on a card if you use it properly. So now I wanted to try a different color family. So this is the E4s. So you want to look for a family that has the most markers in your collection. And of course I have them all. So I picked the E4s because I wanted something that's a little on the 
not so bright brown side. And the reason that I thought I would suggest this is because if you are going to a Thanksgiving dinner this year, and I know it's early, it's way, way early to be thinking about Thanksgiving dinner, but if you wanted to get some coloring done ahead, this is a color combination. It's going to be neutral. It's one of those things that is going to go with any napkins you buy around Thanksgiving time. So if you don't know what your color theme is going to be, or if you're going to dinner at someone else's and you don't know what theirs is going to be, you can make these cute little treat boxes. It's a Lawn Fawn die that's brand new and you just fold it up after you're done and put little treats inside and that would be a great little thing to have for favors on a Thanksgiving dinner party table. But I'm just gonna color in a variety, again, the same way as I did with my, my little penguin, I'm gonna color a variety of browns. And some of them will be dark areas, some of them will be light. But after I airbrush the background, you can tell that some of those areas that even, even though they have a little color in them, are starting to appear white because of the color that I'm putting next to them. I surrounded the images with a little bit of color. And now as I add more and more into the images themselves, the color is going to start popping. Look at that crust on the pie. It looks like it's white, even though we know the paper was creamed to start with. And I airbrushed over it and it still comes out looking white because I've added enough contrast. That's what contrast will do for you. Even if you're using a limited color palette, contrast can carry the image for you very, very well. So each of my little critters and main images is going to be a little on the darker side. So it adds a real pop of color contrast just in the dark light. It's not adding color. It's just adding a lot of fun to this. And these would be, like I said, easy to get done ahead and they would match anything that you've got going on for your dinner table. And I'm always, about, I'm always thinking about getting ahead. I'm never actually getting ahead, but I'm always thinking about getting ahead. So this is my attempt to think myself into being ready for a holiday that's not even close. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna use some Be Creative tape to seal this shut. I'm just gonna put that on the flap, this little tab. And the way the die works, it just has little scores that you can fold right over and assemble this. Super easy to make a little treat box to put on your Thanksgiving dinner table. And that's the two sides of it. And I think it came out really, really sweet. So I would love for you to go and check out Mendy's new company, Sunny Studios, and see what she has on offer. And check out the Blog Hop as well, because there's lots of great people participating and supporting her in her new venture. And here's a couple other videos if you've got time on your hands and you want to hang out here on YouTube. And otherwise, uh, be sure to subscribe. Click that subscribe button. And I will see you in future videos, because I put them out a couple times a week, and you don't want to miss anything. I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.